It's truly a privilege to be here. It's really an honor to be a participant in Tele Brasil. And it's a pleasure here to be here in Brazil at this particular time. This is among the most exciting times for us to be together as technology and telecommunications executives. It's a tremendous time of change. Change in the ways people are taking advantage of telecommunications and information technology. And it's a time of tremendous opportunity. Opportunity for us as telecommunications companies, as information technology companies, and for us together as enablers of e-business. This is a chance for us to help organizations of every kind and size to advance their models of operation using technology and telecommunications capabilities that were quite simply never before available to them. I have a simple purpose in being here today, to share with you IBM's perspective on how this change and opportunity are playing out around the world. To do this, I'll draw on insights we've developed through our significant relationships with virtually every major telco in the world. And I'll draw on the insights we've gained as the leader in e-business transformation for both our clients and ourselves. But why now? Why is this time so exciting? And why here, here in Brazil, across all of Latin America, in Europe, Asia, and North America? The change I just mentioned is driven by many things. We tend to think of these as both structural and environmental, as well as technological. Let's talk about these for a moment, and then think about the implications for how we move forward in our businesses. From the structural and environmental point of view, it's clear we're living in, well, again, a time of momentous change. It's a time of deregulation, time of privatization. It's a time of globalization, of opening markets and falling barriers within countries and between them. Now, as a part of the globalization trend, we're also seeing a lot of regionalization, of consolidation, certainly across the Atlantic Ocean, between Latin America and Europe, between Latin America, the Caribbean islands, and North America, and of course, within Latin America itself. This has dramatic consequences for economies of scale, for access to new customers, for leveraging the technology bases that are driving the telecom industry. There are also implications for tax policy, which I'll return to later. Now let's consider these changes that are driven by technology. And let's start with the big one, the internet. Among the many things the internet is doing, it's democratizing the communications network by giving everyone access to it. In a way never before possible, it's connecting people, it's connecting companies, and it's connecting institutions. And then there's the advent of wireless technology. Thanks to its increasing affordability and availability, it's spreading across the globe at an unprecedented rate. And in addition to wireless, the world of business is on the verge of exploiting the huge capacity possible with broadband technologies such as DSL and cable. Now, not surprisingly, it's the combination of these technologies that's really changing the landscape when it comes to the configuration and the availability of technologies and how they will be used in the marketplace. When you add up all these changes in structure, environment, and technology, you see a remarkable effect on usage. Much larger percentages of our populations are becoming connected, and it's encompassing people of different incomes, different backgrounds, different regions. Just as interesting and important, we're seeing growth in both wireline and wireless use. According to the International Trade Union, the number of fixed telephone lines globally will grow from 105 million in 1999 to over 1.1 billion by year 2002. The growth of wireless subscribers is even greater, from 472 million in 1999 
to one billion in 2002. So in two years, there will be nearly as many wireless subscribers as there are wireline subscribers. That's a dramatic change with dramatic implications for your business. Now at IBM, we've maintained a few things since the beginning of the internet revolution some five years ago. First, we said the internet would not be mainly for research or entertainment or chat, as the prevailing wisdom had it. We said it would be about business, and this has come to pass. Then we said that as large as the business to consumer internet market would be, it would ultimately be dwarfed by the business to business internet market. And certainly this too is coming to pass. It stands to reason. Because of the convergence of computing and communications, it's allowed businesses to redefine the way they operate. It has changed the way they connect with their customers, their partners, their supply chains, their business, their rather distribution channels. The internet has burrowed its way into every facet of the enterprise, liberating extraordinary economies of money and time. That's the nature and the promise and the glory of what we at IBM were first to call e-business. And all of you here, CEOs, other business executives, and government officials, have a chance to play a critical part in its development. The part being that it's your job to create the conditions that will allow e-business to flourish. It's your job to put the e-business infrastructure in place, not only for your bottom lines, but for the progress of your nation. Now further, it's entirely possible that the internet will have a more profound impact on the operations in Latin America than on those in any other part of the world. That's because of how the internet, e-business, and whole changes in the telecommunications arena allow us to drop the barriers, surmount the traditional obstacles in price, in reach, and in use that have precluded participation in the past. It's an exciting time. Now the question arises, who gets to play? Who gets to play in this new world? Fortunately, it isn't a world that's waiting to be invented. It's happening. It's not just ideas. There are real things to do. And best of all, as I've indicated, it's not a closed world. It's not a world of one or two players. It's not a world of just IBM, though of course we at IBM might like it to be. It's a world of many players and many ideas. And in this world, the telecom service provider, the cable provider, has an expanding and changing role to play. Certainly the richness and the history of voice doesn't go away, but the role of data and the leveraging of it in an IP network and the transformation of the network from a traditional one to a modern and futuristic one are all critical for these companies to wrestle with and to position themselves in order to execute. And by the way, execute in every form of last mile. You know, we tend to think of ourselves as either wireless or wireline providers or local providers or long distance providers or cable providers. There are roles for specialists and roles for full service providers. The challenge will be to develop the business models that best fit the ambitions reflected in those names. But telecom service providers will probably not act alone and probably can't. They need others, a network of suppliers, a network of partners. What kinds of companies am I talking about? Companies that will help to lead them in this network transformation. We're talking about reinventing the networks in an IP world. So the telecom equipment manufacturers have a major role to play here as do information technology companies. It means a big change for them. It means opening up the network rather than keeping it proprietary. Now in the environment I just described, there are vast challenges and opportunities. Think about it. There's tremendous growth, as I said, in wireless and wireline use in Brazil and in Latin America. There's an explosive growth in internet use by individuals and companies with an opportunity to grow even faster. I noted there will be over one billion wireless subscribers in a couple of years. By then, 70% of new cellular phones and 80% of all 
personal digital assistants, PDAs, will have some form of access to the internet. And what's more, it's predicted that 63% of all transactions on the web will be generated by mobile devices, while over 80% of new applications deployed to mobile workers and other consumers will be designed for non-PC devices, such as mobile phones. New models and changing skills are required to take advantage of this opportunity for leadership in the marketplace. Now, what are the areas of change impinging on the leaders and the top telecom service providers, the top cable providers, the top wireless providers? What are the areas of challenge? Well, we tend to break those into three parts. One has to do with the business support systems and processes of running a telecom. Another has to do with the transformation of the network infrastructure to support the new business models. And the third has to do with the development of new offerings, new services, new ways of generating value in the marketplace, capturing share, establishing one's brand, and establishing competitive differentiation. Let's take a look at these parts. First, at business support services and processes. Clearly, for the service providers to successfully deal with this changing environment, they need, above all, to maintain and build their customer franchise. But how do you do that? Well, where do you stand in terms of customer relationship management? What is your customer loyalty? At what rates are you churning? To what degree do you personalize and customize your offerings and relationship based on what you know about your customer and what they are telling you their needs are? How clearly does your billing describe to your customer what he's paying for? These questions have spawned great change in your industries. We're seeing new billing systems that reflect both an IP and voice world and that cover the variety of offerings you're taking to the market. We're seeing an intense focus on customer relationship management and on new systems and new business processes in support of customer self-service over the internet. We're also seeing the rise of business intelligence technologies and systems that increase our understanding of our customers that allow us to take advantage of the wealth of information we've accumulated on them over the years. Suddenly, that data is more than an archive. It's a living and vital source of competitive advantage. Further, we're seeing the use of new processes and systems to drive down costs internally, to get a better return on every dollar spent, on every real spent. This is a business that's getting more and more competitive you can't afford to waste money as you'll quickly price yourself out of the game. So what else are we seeing? We're seeing new business support systems focused on procurement, focused on financial analysis and financial tools to better understand how to spend your money and how to leverage the supply chain environment. One might think, well, these are very traditional areas. This doesn't sound like the cutting edge e-business world I read about every day in the newspapers. These are areas businesses have always had to concentrate on. And you'd be exactly right. That's what e-business really is about. It's not a, at root about the e-exchanges and e-markets, though those are critical developments. It's about fundamental change in the heart of your business. It's about more than being a dot-com with a fancy web page. It's about connecting all the dots inside your business so that it's integrated from end to end back to front, one seamless entity that performs at peak efficiency and effectiveness in everything it does, leading to higher revenues and lower costs, protected by an unassailable competitive advantage. Now let's move to the network and its transformation. All of us in this room have set an expectation with customers, a remarkably fine expectation, an expectation that most other industries have not been able to meet. And it's pretty fantastic. When a customer picks up a phone, he expects to get a dial tone. He doesn't expect not to. It's a terrific achievement due to the reliable infrastructure you've developed. But the question is, what are you going to, where are you going with that? What is the next step? Because in the internet world, the e-business world, you can do so much more. I think you're going to find yourself moving from dial tone expectation to application tone expectation. That means that this transformation of the network 
from voice switch to IP is really a move from voice to data. It's really a move from dial tone to applications. To the degree you can provide the same level of management, the same level of service, the same level of quality and application tone you've provided in dial tone, you'll maintain the satisfaction of your customers and you'll provide differentiation from each other because you're all at different levels in your ability to do that. Why is that? Because the technologies are changing quickly. The skills to be able to execute this are not uniformly available. The players that have access to those skills, those that have developed relationships with partners that have skills, those that invest in technologies like the middleware, the network management, these players will be the winners. You must also figure out how you will exploit the huge increase in bandwidth capacity that will result from the proliferation of DSL and interactive cable technologies. Make no mistake, these are very tough issues. For one, not all the technology is readily available. There's a lot that IBM and others have under development. And further, we have to move from a closed network world of voice to an open network world of IP. We need to invite software companies to participate, to deliver value. We need to make sure that we have the middleware that's robust and carrier grade. It's not all here. You start simple and grow. You start with basic applications and move forward. I mentioned partners before, and not least of your challenges will be picking the right ones to work with. Maintaining and extending your relationships with traditional partners and telecom equipment manufacturers is always going to be important. But now you've got to open yourselves up to people from the information technology world too, if you're going to make this application tone reliability a reality. So who are the partners to choose? I mean, the goal is to make your network an intelligent network, congenial to data as well as to voice. And by that, and that by and large, is the province of the information technology folk. IBM doesn't pretend to have all the answers, but we would suggest the first crucial step is to expand your outlook to encompass this whole new set of partners and players. It's, much more, it's a much more complicated world, but it's a world that because of its sophistication, because of its potential, will enable the spread of new models, new kinds of products, new kinds of services, and as a result, new revenue streams and increased differentiation. The winners will emerge to the extent that they develop a network that is reliable, that is manageable, and that is deliverable. Now, I've talked about this in support systems, how to maintain relationships, how to drive down costs, and how to effectively bill and collect revenues. I've talked about network evolution, how to evolve from a network-based network, a voice-based network, to an IP data-oriented, IT-oriented network. Why do all this? For one reason, to bring new offerings to the market. That's the third challenge I mentioned. You need to provide differentiation not only in the value you bring to your customers, but differentiation in quality and availability too. You need new offerings that will drive revenue, new offerings that will drive share, new offerings that will present your brand in a progressive way. Now, you may have noticed a lot of exciting changes in the areas of new offerings, ones I'm sure many of you are involved in, and ones that we at IBM are involved in. One example is NTT Docomo's delivering digital music over wireless phones. A few years ago, this was a fantasy, but soon it will be commonplace. Now, when I think of these offerings, I think of them in several different categories. I think of them, for one, as access-oriented offerings, how we get more of our customers, whether small business or consumer or anyone else, to take advantage of DSL technology, which I touched on before. To take advantage of faster speed over twisted pair cable and always-on capabilities. You know the forecast for DSL use. For example, in the United States, DSL penetration is expected to grow at 220% per year, from virtually no penetration in 1998 to nearly 10 million homes and small business by 2003. That's fantastic growth, but short of ubiquity. DSL has great potential, 
but it's not moving as fast as possible because there are complications in getting it to work, complications that partners need to help you with. Obstacles are inevitable. The important thing in the communications business, though, is to experiment, to conduct pilots. That's what we're doing with AT&T, Fidelity Investments, Lycos, SBC, and Bell Atlantic to test our new NetVista Internet appliance, which will help companies reach their customers with tailored, branded content and services. There are new models available, like the bundling of PCs with DSL modems as part of the service and rolling that out. But to be creative about this, you have to be involved yourself. It's asking yourself, as the president or senior executive of your company, or the head of your government bureau, how many of my people are involved in the technology? How many of my people are on the net? I suspect the number isn't as high as many of you would like, and that's a problem, because if the usage isn't universal, or nearly so, in your organizations, you're going to have trouble selling the value to your customers. The colloquially American expression is, you can't talk the talk unless you walk the walk. Now, we have set up programs with telcos to help them get their employees online. And we've expanded those programs not only into employee affiliate kinds of programs, but also for them to be able to share it with their neighbors, and then to extend those offerings to the world at large. So though DSL is hot, it's not going to happen on its own. There are many things that have to be done, partnerships that have to be put in place, models that need to be created. But what about cable? Well, what about it? To IBM and its approach to cable, there's really no difference. We're doing as much work with cable companies, with cable modems, and with embedding cable modems into our PCs and providing offerings for cable companies to offer their customers as we are with telcos. Uh, for example, last month we signed an agreement with Scientific Atlanta to bring real-time interactive shopping and e-commerce transactions to cable television. They'll deliver interactive e-commerce solutions to their cable operator customers with our technology. So this is a world where last miles are all available, and it's leveraging each last mile that's available as a customer, as a consumer, as a business person, to be able to be pervasive in my ability to operate my business. In other words, to be able to operate my business where I am, the way I need to, whether that's at home over my cable or DSL environment, in my office or by wireless. I'm indifferent. I'm not a single last mile kind of person. I'm a business person, and I need to operate wherever I am the way I am. Now let's talk about the infrastructure of operating a business. I want to start off by talking about it from the point of view of a small or medium business as an enterprise. For them, the choice over the last few years has been increasingly clear, to outsource all or most of the information technology to specialists in that area, leaving to themselves the task of focusing on their own special strengths. The internet is only strengthening and accelerating this trend, forcing each of us to occupy our area of comparative advantage and to leave the rest to others. It's a continuation of the division of labor story. Yet, there is another step in the continuum, one that touches on all of you closely. As more and more of the world's companies leverage the network for their businesses, they realize they need the best response time possible. And that depends on their connection to a whole new breed of network companies. They're called the net gens, those born on the web because of the web, we increasingly realized as we worked with them that they don't even have their own data centers. Those centers sit in global centers in companies like Quest or Global Crossing or in a co-location facility, bringing under one roof the information technology and the network, affording the best possible response time and network facility. It's a perfect match to the business model of a new generation of companies devoted to e-business. The common perception is that the NetGen leaders are technology adepts. They're not for the most part. They're business people with revolutionary ideas. From that explodes a whole new set of opportunities, particularly available to telecom service providers because you own the network. And those opportunities come about most typically in partnerships with companies like IBM. 
companies that have the competencies and the capabilities to build out and fit and manage centers in concert with those that own the network facilities and relationships with customers. You've seen some very large deals and announcements that IBM has made with companies like Quest and KPN Quest. This is a huge business opportunity that's being driven by the demand for intelligent, responsive, reliable network on which to conduct e-business. The other thing I'd like to touch on is wireless. Since it's been around for a while, and it's been quite a cash generator for many, many companies, it may seem odd to talk about it in the context of new business models. But it's actually entirely appropriate to talk about it here. The growth of wireless in Latin America is in fact exceeding the growth of internet use. The lower internet penetration, uh, significantly lower than in the US and Europe, is due at least in part to lagging deregulation and therefore higher costs. But it's due as well, in fact, that generally, in order to access the network, you have to have a PC. And PC, uh, per capita penetration here, is, um, is low. But Latin America and other regions can get around this issue with the help of technologies that are allowing net access through wireless phones and other devices. This has staggering implications for all of you. It means that you can be at the center of the continent's transformation to an internet-based world. It means that wherever a wireless internet transaction takes place, it goes through you. And as the internet becomes available over these wireless phones, you can be sure that wireless usage will increase even further from its already frenetic growth rate. Quite literally, you'll be at the center of economic growth in your nation, in your region, and your revenues and your market capitalization will reflect that. I've spoken at length on many topics, but I'd like to leave you with some concluding thoughts, mainly about the role of government in all this. First, I need to applaud those government officials who have helped evoke progressive deregulation. You've done your nation a very great service at the right time. There's no question that deregulation is driving down the price of participation, and as a result, significantly expanding the populations, consumer and business, that are availing the network. We hope that deregulation and, in its wake, increasing competition will continue. We would very much welcome that. Early on, I mentioned tax policy. Globalization and the internet are creating significant cross-border tax issues, ones that governments everywhere must cooperate on to resolve. At IBM, we're working to preserve tax neutrality. In other words, we believe that taxes imposed on online sales of goods and services should not create extra taxation for online vendors or their customers. No one should opt out of this. We also believe that any e-commerce tax solution should include the simplification of current tax systems to reduce the compliance burden on all types of vendors. Let me end by returning where I started. This is clearly an exciting time to be a telecom service provider, a cable company, a telecom equipment manufacturer, or an information technology company. It's an exciting time because it's a high-risk time. The winners among you and among us will move extremely fast and make the right decisions. Change is required, and many companies are not used to affecting change and affecting it quickly. But I think you'll take, if you take up the challenge, and if you see this in a grand way, for I can say that not since the advent of the telephone itself have telecom service providers had such an enormous opportunity to change the face of business and society and to reap the rewards of doing so. Yet I think that simply put, companies like yours and companies like mine, like IBM, are ultimately like plumbers. What we provide is the plumbing of the new economy. Now I didn't go to university to become a plumber, but when I see our role in this light, I gain a whole new appreciation for what it means to be the quiet, dependable, unseen bedrock of something grand, as you are and as we are. What we are doing together now and in the future is establishing the foundation for a whole new way of connecting and interacting, one that was never dreamt of till a few short years ago. It's all possible because of the risks you're taking, the investments you're making, and the leadership you're showing here in Brazil and in Latin America. 
I thank you for your attention. Muito obrigada.